portrait actually took a little bit longer to sketch than I thought it would because it's bigger than the last time. It's about twice the size of the tiny oil painting we were working on last night and Friday. Um, excuse me while I work on some setup stuff. things up here. Alright, so we might have a little bit of a uh, stream delay right now because I'm finishing one more thing up. That's okay. to quit Photoshop really fast. I'm going to quit Photoshop really fast. So that should, that should be ready to go. Um, we're going to continue using the palette that we were working from yesterday. We'll definitely need a little bit more paint today because this is a slightly bigger oil painting, fortunately, because then I have more, more space to work. Uh, I'm going to bump this in back a little bit so I have some room for my palette. Um, I thought this would be a fun portrait because there's a, a good mixture of um, tones in the shadows. There's some, a lot of cool shadows, but there's also a lot of warm shadows because this guy took a photograph of himself in uh, early morning or late afternoon sunlight. So he's got all those warm shadows in his face and then the rest of the room is very cool by contrast. Uh, so that should be fun to try to paint. And I'm going to go ahead and start by laying in the dark tone over here and some of the darks internally uh, just so that we can start to establish that contrast. Most of the shadows in internal uh, near his face, around his beard, uh, on this side of the eye, these are actually going to be purple tones. Um, so I'll start with this background which is kind of an indigo gray, maybe a little bit of a purple and then we will continue with the internal spaces. Um, and today I get to use bigger brushes, yay! Grab some oil. My water silo. moving some paints a little bit closer to me. Uh, kind of felt rushed since I took too long to set up.
Alright, so we're going to start with that blue, as I mentioned in the back, which is primarily going to be a little bit of port gray and some Payne's gray, uh, because we can always add some other color over it, either in a glaze or some other fashion. Um, if you can see in the reference photo, I'm not sure if you can see the same thing I'm seeing, but, but uh, it's actually kind of a haze because of the way that the camera recorded the darkness versus the really high contrast light on the face. Um, there's this interesting haze between the darkness of the room and the face. And it's actually sort of a violet color, and it blurs out some of the details, but we're going to just treat it as an indigo or a purple color. So we need Payne's gray and Torrid gray. Hopefully we won't have to use any black in this painting. The tiny painting had so much black. Toxic Terrace, I don't know if you're there. I wasn't in the, the uh, dashboard right when I started streaming. I thought I saw you on the list. So if you're here, welcome. Welcome back. I hope your uh, internet doesn't fail you today. Hello, M4M4N. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're enjoying this Saturday. Uh, I mentioned I am adding in the darkest tone of this painting first. We're going to lay in some of the background color and then some of the shadows of the face, just so that we can start to establish that strong contrast and the full range of tones. So right now I'm mixing up a little bit of Payne's Grey and Torrid Grey. And just a tiny bit of white so that it is actually a shade instead of the straight color mixture. I think I might have to add a little bit of Alizarin Crimson just to give it that slight purple hue. Hopefully we have enough of it. Um, in in the reference, oh, too bad, Toxic Terrorist. One day when I'm a famous Twitch streamer, I will buy you better internet. The uh, reference imagery has this tone being actually a lot brighter than the uh, color I'm about to put down, and more violet. So I might have to adjust it, but I think it'll be good just to get the dark tone down quickly to some degree. I made the mistake of working on unprimed paper again, so it's going to soak up a lot of the paint. Next time, hopefully, I will learn from this mistake and prepare ahead of time and prime my surface. So today things are bound to move a little bit more slowly than usual, just because I am fighting that absorption. Um, again, when you're painting the background, the reason I'm putting it in first is so that we have that tone to establish the contrast in the range. But when you're painting a portrait, putting in the background is a pretty good opportunity to correct any shapes that you've put down on the face and the head. Um, so I would rather do it secondarily or later in the painting process, uh, but we do need this dark tone. Hey mocap, welcome back! We started a new painting. It's another random person from the internet. So far I've only painted one person that I know personally. Part of that is because I always get worried that they'll be offended if it doesn't look like them.
Yeah, so it's another image that I found on Reddit gets drawn. It was actually posted really recently, so I'm hoping that we can uh, post a picture of the painting progress to that thread after the stream. Normally I paint too slowly to really participate in the process. Uh, I just select them because they're free and available. This is a little bit too bright, but I'm going to use it anyway. Too bright and too pink. Uh, I will beat it down. You guys can kind of see the paint that I'm creating here in the corner. This is too uh, red in tone, but that's okay. Artistic license, right? And because, I, like I said, this, this is an unprimed surface, so it's, it's absorbing so much of the oil in the paint. It's a lot more like dry brushing than a la prima. Thank you for the follow. Um, I hope you are enjoying the painting process. I'm going to call you M4 for short. M4, do you make art yourself? Are you a creator of some sort? Do you paint or draw or develop games or write music? We have another streamer in my household who streams games. Um, someday, when I have more followers, I will host him for any of you guys who are interested. But uh, we often watch creative when we're tired of watching gaming streams. So I know not everyone watching is, is a painter, but it's always fun to talk about the kinds of things you make and whether or not you're having problems with your art process. another paper back here so that I wouldn't worry about going over the edges. Um, normally if I'm creating a finished piece then I would have uh, blocked out a portion around the painting that is either going to be covered by a mat or cut off later. That's actually uh, the plan with a lot of those MDF paintings, the little automatic sketches, and the uh, tiny oil painting we were working on yesterday. The plan is to get rid of the excess space with my table saw. Contrarium is out of town, actually. I don't know if they'll be able to uh, watch the stream today. They were with us last night. But not Friday. Also, Toxic Terrace, I changed my schedule. I was on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Now it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So three days in a row. Oh, so much paint. So much paint and so much oil. I'm great. How are you, Toxic Terrorist? This work week was very long, so I'm, I'm glad it is the weekend. Happy to be painting. I was really excited to come home and paint on Friday after such a long week. <laughs> no! You keep trying. Like I said, I admire your persistence. But we have a pretty good set of people. We don't really need mods, right? No one has been terrible since early on. Plus I think we do have, 
I do like painting expressive pa faces, yeah. I, the, ser the serene faces, the plain expressions are kind of meh. They don't necessarily provide a lot of interesting shadows and shapes in the face. Although that, that first one we did, the guy with the beard, the really pale guy, he, he had a pretty plain expression on, but he had a nice quality of light in his image. I think it's mostly I like the quality of light. Um, but yeah, expressive faces, faces with a lot of interesting features. Um, eventually I'd like to work up to painting people with tattoos, because I really want to figure out how to paint tattoos on the skin. Skin by itself is already a challenge. I don't have a terrorist. No, terrorism is not based on race. Terrorism is based on your actions. But I was saying, I think we do actually have a monitor on. Uh, I don't know if, if Red Lazarus is working. He said he was going to watch the stream and make his own art. But if he's here, then we do have a moderator present. And depending on how long we stream, Casey or Contra might show up later. Yep, mod on deck. Mod on standby, just in case. Well, I do have biases, I will admit that, but everyone does. But I'm not make I'm not preventing you from being a mod because you're a terrorist. Just because we don't need more mods right now. I'm sure they would be pleased to hear that they are missed. Alright, we're pretty close to getting a, a little bit of color done down. Uh, you can see it's really transparent and inconsistent because the surface is absorbing so much of the oil in the pigment, it's pretty hard to get a dark color. Um, but I'm, I might mix up something, a big chunk of something. I don't actually have a palette knife right now. I'm surprised that I have gone for, for so long streaming without replacing my palette knife, um, but I may have to get one here shortly if we keep increasing the scale of our painting, which I would love to do. You guys know I would rather be painting at 4 foot, 8 foot, or 12 foot than these little tiny paintings. Oh yeah, Toxic Terrace, I downloaded new chill mixes so that we are not listening to the same thing over and over again. Monologue on what paint brushes to use with what types of paint. Actually, honestly, um, it's not super important. It's just important that you uh, pay attention to whether or not they're, they specify that they're made for uh, watercolor or other kinds of paint. There is a little bit in the bristles. <laughs> you got me started on an actual monologue, thanks. Um, see, you're not my moderator, you're like my uh, teleprompter. Um, there is a slight difference in the absorptive qualities of bristles in brushes, and a lot of people will swear by natural, brush natural bristled brushes, um, but for my purposes, I haven't really seen much of a difference between synthetic or Synthetic or natural hair, uh, acrylic or oil painting brushes, the only difference that you will experience very strongly is that you cannot use, um, you, after you use oil paint on your brush, you can't then go use 
that brush with watercolor because the oils have absorbed into the bristles to some degree and it won't pick up the water-based pigments very well. No more cat noises. I, I don't know, they're still on there. They're still on the playlist. They could come up if we stream long enough. All those creepy cat compositions. Yeah, you do help. See, you're, you are a vital part of the community even without being a mod. Rigel is mom. You are cool. I, you know, I've actually often thought about whether, uh, I'm still undecided on whether or not I want to have children, but um, I have often thought about what they would call me or what I would want them to call me. I haven't really settled on anything. I don't think I will unless I have children. Okay, I just want to get a little bit more density in the darkness really close to the figure and then we can move on to some of these internal shadows. <laughs> Mama! That, that is uh, pretty adorable. I got really spoiled with that tiny painting because the surface was actually properly primed and the paint went on so smoothly. <laughs> that is cruel. I do need to put color there because it looks like a weird highlight in a fog. I wish you guys could see how quickly the oil is absorbed. This is paperboard, illustration board. I do not recommend it for uh, fresh oil painting. A type of fish. Man, now I'm trying to figure out what kind of fish.
No, no song requests at this time. I like my chill, nondescript music. I mean, it's not all nondescript, some of them are uh, modern songs mixed in there. Okay, we are going to ignore the background for now and move on to the face. Um, I'm gonna zoom in on our reference a little bit. Bye Toxic Terrace, thanks for stopping by. See you later. So I'm gonna focus on this half of the face, I think. Uh, so we'll start with this, which is a pretty dark bluish shadow. So more of that Payne's gray, kind of violet. That's a color that also appears along the line of this lip, so I'm just going to lay that in a little bit. And then we can lighten it as necessary. This is definitely a painting I should have primed the surface for. It would have made the process a lot easier. But you live and learn, right? But because the the uh, surface is absorbing or absorbing all the oil and the pigment, um, it's going to be tough to get a nice transition between colors in those shadows and shades like an underpainting and then we'll have to come back with more paint later. But because the the uh, surface is absorbing or absorbing all the oil and the pigment, um, it's going to be tough to get a nice transition between colors in those shadows and shades. For the eye wrinkles, um, I'm probably going to use a very violet brown. Uh, so right now I'll just use a little bit of burnt sienna mixed with uh, burnt umber, which is a greenish brown, but it's it's dark and a earthy tone, which will m mesh well once we actually start adding the dark violet tones.
There's just the barest hint of his open eye in there too. I think I need a very small flat brush to make those fine lines, which we'll have to go over again. Um, I'm probably going to be all over this painting. Normally I talk about how you, we should use, uh, we should paint front to back. The backmost layer to the frontmost layer so that you're always overlapping your paints. Uh, but there are so many different so many different uh, uh, not layers but it's it's almost flat because there is no real depth in his feature. Like there's a little bit of depth. There's shadows behind the nose and clearly the cheeks are set back and the eyes are set back but there's not necessarily a super clear delineation of forward progression in space. Um, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get caught up with hopping back and forth as my attention is caught by different surfaces. And we'll definitely have to add these wrinkles in back again uh, after we get a little bit of the skin tone down. He has a really really warm skin tone so this is a good candidate for a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna that I mentioned is good for building up skin tones. Especially in the warm shadows. Uh, I think I'm gonna... I am gonna start to put down some of that color in the eyes so that we can put the shadows down. The wrinkles. Hopefully it won't, won't get too wet, but like I said, this surface is absorbing a lot of the pigment and the oil, so it shouldn't be uh, too long to wait before uh, we can put more paint over the surface that's wet. And for any of you who are watching who are interested in oil painting and haven't done it, just beginning, um, there's a general rule of thumb, which is that you should put uh, oil paint with higher oil content over oil paint that is more cured or less oily um, in order to prevent trapping oils between the layers. See, I got distracted again by the ear. To varnish the painting too soon also, um, it can create little cracks and clouds in the top surface of your painting. See, I got distracted again by the ear. Some of those warm highlights. I figured while I had some burnt sienna on my brush, I might as well put those in. They'll need to be a little bit more pink than I have them now.
will I tone my canvas? You mean will I add colors around or uh, will I change the color later? I was supposed for this one I was supposed to put a, a primer layer and then I ran out of time. Uh, I already I misjudged how long it would take to do the sketch this afternoon and I was going to prime it with gesso so that the paint would be smooth um, going on but I forgot to and I am definitely regretting it. I was just uh, my schedule got too delayed today. Yeah, Mocap, what do you mean by tone the canvas? Oh, like underpaint? Uh, no, uh, in this case, no. And actually, when I paint people, if I had put the ground layer on properly for this painting, uh, all of his skin tone wouldn't have been an earth tone. It would have been a very light green. Um, the, probably the next time I do a portrait, I'll do that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people use red. Red or uh, bright orange. There are a lot of people who like very strong pigments. Uh, very strong pigments and very um, bright colors to peek through their paintings. In fact, one of my first dreams, I told you there is a, an artist who I like a lot who uses this almost neon orange tone beneath her paintings of people. And it plays really nicely with the cool tones that she creates in their skin. I just It gives the painting a little bit of uh, vibrational energy, I think. For me, the light green does that as well, because most of the colors that I'm mixing are um, reddish in their tone, so if there is any of that light green that pokes through, it, it mixes to kind of create that, um, if you look at your forearm, it mixes to create that effect, that visual effect that the light does on your arm where the blood is coming close to the surface.
I'm gonna try to get some of the skin tone on a different brush. So it's mostly uh, a white as the base, some yellow ochre, a little bit of burnt sienna, and a tiny, tiny touch of alizarin crimson. What's also tough in this case is that um, there there is actual very close there are tones in the in the reference image that are very very close to white, um, so we will have white on the canvas, which means that all of the highlights on the face are actually not white. They're a pale yellow or a pale kind of skin tone, which means that all of the skin tones have to be artificially lighter to create that contrast. I just glanced over at the preview and thought to myself, man, there's like no color on this painting. Because I'm so impatient anymore. I want things to happen very quickly. But sometimes it's slow. Soy impaciente. I am impatient. You made some- yeah, that's awesome. It does make a nice effect. It's really fun. That's why he did it. That's why he does it. That's why he demonstrated it for viewers, because it is fast and fun. What kind of scene did you end up painting?
Northern Lights, yeah, that's really fun, especially with that style of painting. Alright, I'm going to try to get a lot of the darkish brownish blue in here. This is actually really blue, those shadows. It's because they're reflecting off of the white and it confuses the camera lens. So it's recorded as a kind of blue, which means I need some blue. Payne's Gray may not be enough. Actually, I'm just going to try Payne's Gray and see what happens. It'll probably look great on stream. Everything looks kind of monochromatic right now on stream. I swear there's color in there. Yeah, I think I need a little bit of actual blue. Have any of you other people watching tried to do Bob Ross's painting style? Um, Mocap was talking about the times he uh, he paints, paints a black ground and then adds transparent color and then uses white to bring those colors out. I've never actually done that um, for a full effect, but I do know that it's a lot of fun. This shadow right here is a pretty warm shadow, so I'm not going to put any of the blue there. And there's also a difference between the shadow created inside the beard and behind the beard and the shadow created behind the beard on the face. So I'm trying to stick with this for the spaces where there's just hair. Someone was commenting the other day on how loud my brushwork is. Can you guys hear it? Can you hear it, Vocap? So this is, this is the distinct region where it's only shadow internal to the beard and you can see that his chin is kind of showing now. Those shadows will be warmer, a kind of warm violet. These are darkish blue. 
And that's actually the secret to, to drawing beards or painting beards. Um, a lot of people will start and try to draw the light tones of the beard or draw dark beard hairs and leave spaces between those hairs. But the secret in oil painting, for me at least, is that you put down a dark ground and then the highlight hairs are what give you the sense that it's a full beard. The paint on my palette is really dark, I'll show it to you. Uh, I'm using this color right here, that one, except that the surface is absorbing all the paint, so watch when I put it down. See this gray right here? It gets really light because it's absorbing all of the oil and the pigment, which is why I'm going to have to treat this as an underpainting and then come back and add more color probably. Alright, so we've got a decent amount of that beard shadow in. I'll put a little right here too. We'll work on those warmer violet shadows. So I'm still gonna use that color I was mixing. This, this color right here, um, but it will be a little bit warmer. I'll put some more alizarin crimson and a little tiny bit of burnt sienna. Then I'll go places like here. It doesn't necessarily look warm enough, so I'll add a little more warmth. Now it just looks dark. That's okay. It'll be corrected once the uh, beard starts coming in. Once he grows the beard. Once our painting grows the beard. This is actually a pretty good color for some of the other shadows, so I might switch gears and start adding those. And this one is going to be very brown, I think, very warm, right here. Yeah, definitely you can paint a portrait if you can't draw. Um, I, I keep talking about uh, how I can't draw and I feel much more comfortable about painting. Um, but it's very, very possible. Painting is a lot different process than drawing, in my opinion, because you're looking at the, the color transitions and the 
light and the overlapping shapes more than you are trying to um, use small lines to build up color and, and shape. Um, so the, the way that I drew this actually was uh, I laid out a, a grid. I did use a grid for this. I think it's kind of hard to see in the stream. Um, but I made a one inch by one inch grid and I put it over the reference image and on the paper and then literally a lot like Chuck Close, I looked at each little square and made the line or the lines that were in the square as a reference. So this is like on the, this is on the first third of the square and then, um, let me see a good, good example. This goes through the middle of a square. So instead of having to stop and assess the entire image as a whole and draw those proportions, if you break it down by a square, then it becomes more like, uh, like a grid transfer. So it's a lot easier to draw little chunks and not worry about the proportion overall. I need to put some tones on his nose so that starts to jump forward. Too dark. That's a little too gray, but that's okay. This is exactly the time when I wish I had primed my surface because um, the nose is all about subtle transitions and with this very dry paint it's kind of impossible to make subtle transitions. I swear it's not gray in real life. I'll make it warmer to compensate. It's too warm. But it's at least better. Let's see if we can put any of this on the forehead. There's a lot more pink in his skin than I am um, letting myself admit, I think. For those of you who are just jumping in, my surface is unprimed because I rushed this afternoon. Uh, so the paint and the oil is getting absorbed really rapidly by the surface, which means that this is this is much more like an underpainting than a uh, close to finished process. That's why the colors are so dull and uh, the transitions are a little too harsh, which is something that's corrected by subsequent layers of oils, and that's how, you're, how, that's how I think you're supposed to oil paint anyway, um, in layers, in distinct layers. That's what it is best for, honestly.
I'm doing the thing that I talked about last night, which is some of the paint on my my uh, palette is dry, and I keep confusing myself, and I can't quite discern which patches are current and which patches are dry. So I keep trying to pick up old cured oil, oil paint to paint with. Not very effective. I think his forehead needs a bit more of a warm hue. Lighter and warmer. Actually, I'm gonna get some, just a tiny bit of Indian yellow. I have been using yellow ochre. I painted my desk. Um, I've been using yellow ochre, which is kind of a dull, earthy yellow, uh, but I have this paint called Indian Yellow, which is very, very bright and highly pigmented, so it's hard, sometimes hard to uh, overcome that. It kind of overwhelms your paint color the same way that phthalo blue does. But I will add a tiny bit because this painting definitely needs more warmth. The quality of the sunlight is very warm. That seems a little better. And this, this shadow transition is going to seem really harsh, but again, it's because it's uh, kind of impossible to blend colors right now. Hopefully the paint that I'm putting on the surface now will support even soft blending for the next layer of paint that's applied. For anyone who just jumped in, uh, MoCap was asking whether or not you can paint a portrait if you don't know how to draw, and I say that you can. Um, if you use a grid transfer method to set up your base layer, all the, the lines to indicate uh, your basic shapes, that doesn't require drawing skill very much. I think it's entirely possible to know how to paint well, or to be able to paint well, and also not be able to draw. Um, I don't think I'm very good at drawing. I'm, I know I'm not very good at drawing. I, if I try hard, I can get propor proportions down and shapes down, but the stylistic quality of my drawing is very poor. Uh, maybe that's just from practice, maybe I haven't drawn enough, but painting as a process just feels more natural to me. Because it's more about the collision and blending of color than it is small lines that make up a shape or a shade. I think I'm being t a little too conservative with my color right now. There are a lot of bright colors that I see in here. Part of the reason I don't want to use them necessarily is because the the paper is absorbing so much of the pigment that I don't know that I want to waste my colors on this layer right now. I'll have to come back to it in a, a separate layer. Indian yellow really helped. Um, 
it still doesn't look very warm on stream, but the reference imagery that I'm looking at is a lot cooler in real life than the image you guys can see above me. That has a very strong red tint on stream, um, and in reality it's a, lo a little bit cooler. So the painting looks divergent from the color palette of the reference image, but not in real life. I think I will try to match the warmth of the painting you guys can see though. Because um, it's more interesting than this very pallid color that I'm building up. I've got all kinds of nonsense in my brushes because the cats walked past them the other day. So up here it's actually a little bit green because that's where his hairline is. There's that, uh, the little shadow from where he shaves his head in the back. If you guys are wondering why I'm scrubbing the brush across the surface, I hate treating brushes that way. It's actually pretty damaging to the bristles. Um, it puts a lot of strain on the glue that holds them into the ferrule, that little metal part. And it puts a lot of strain on the glue itself and the whole structure of the brush. And you wear down your bristles, but um, I'm trying to mix the color on the surface. So that's why there's some scrubbing going on. Normally it's one direction, directional brush strokes, instead of this little chaotic scrubbing. soon. It's another reason why I like to prime my surfaces, not only so the paint moves across the surface very fluidly, but so that I conserve materials. So I will continue kicking myself until this painting is done. But that's how you learn from your mistakes, right? Pass through the frustration, understand it innately.
What's not true of this particular portrait um, is that his skin doesn't have a lot of color variation. Last night while we were painting the hands of that tiny portrait, I talked a lot about how many different colors are in in skin tones, especially hands where there's so much variation in the depth of flesh and the material right beneath your skin and the light quality of, of the light passing through the skin. That's not really true here because he has such strong directional natural light. It's a very uh, full flat light to some extent. It creates nice shadows for images but it's not necessarily a nice um, it's not really nice for highlighting the color and detail of your face necessarily. He has he has intense highlights on him which blow out a lot of the detail. For all of you folks who have just joined us, thank you for spending some of your Saturday here. I hope you're enjoying the painting process. If you have any questions about art or life or anything, feel free to jump in chat and start a discussion with us. Um, I know that Fred Lazarus, who is watching, is working while he watches the stream. And I definitely encourage that. If you start to feel a creative urge, whatever it is, you want to write, compose music, uh, work on that last little bit of code that you've been putting off, streaming is a good companion for creativity, I think. Watching other creative streamers is what encouraged me to stream. Yeah, I would love to see what you've been working on. I know you were using uh, reference imagery from the British Library's Flickr stream, which is entirely royalty-free, public domain, uh, free use imagery. It's an entirely public use. It's a really great resource if you guys are not familiar. Um, it is probably where I will get a lot of the patterns and uh, some of the reference images for works when I start to create my own compositions again. For the most part, I'm just practicing. Uh, I'm getting back into painting because I haven't done it in a long time. So the paintings that you see here are not necessarily works of art, in my opinion. They're mostly little studies, practice, they're, they're the painting equivalent of sketches for me. Oh yeah, that's not stream appropriate. It is great, but it's not stream appropriate. You could take a picture of just the upper right corner though. They're both really great. He's working on, uh, or Lazarus is working on um, reference imagery that has etching quality, either, etching, either etchings or etching quality drawings uh, to sort of teach himself how he can adapt his line work to that kind of style. It 
if you crop it and, and leave it as the top right corner, you're, you're welcome to drop a link into chat. I will throw it up here for everyone to see. Take a tiny Rigel art break. This is what uh, what Red Lazarus has been working on. He's working from a, an etching and drawing it and teaching himself about the direction of those lines and line weight. That's really I really like that. That's lovely. Um, I think in the future, do you want some feedback? I won't critique your work unless you want me to. So uh, the only thing that I would recommend that in the future is that you make use of that tiny ruler that you have. Because uh, you can see in, in the etching that you were looking at, I'm sure that this is pretty level because it would have been on a little square plate. So all of these points are probably pretty much at the same line. Yours has a bit of a curve to it. So if you map out for yourself um, the extreme edges of the point, it'll give it even more of a graphic standardized etching quality, but I really love the way that those lines are interacting and the, the change in the line weights I think is really good. Um, there are passages like here where it's not quite it's not quite clean enough to read as an etching. Uh, it reads more like your stylistic um, shading, but there are other places where the directions and the line weight are really super clearly referential to etching. Nice inclusion of your tool there, by the way. Feature the tool. It looks like he has a bloodied lip. Oh yeah, I didn't finish adding the shadow underneath this part of the beard. I'll do that with this weird green color I have. feels a bit more like watercolor or something because of the way it's getting absorbed by the paper. I think I'm only going to go to 5.30 this evening, even though I started late. Um, so I've got some other things that I want to work on today. Oh, too green. That's okay, I just want to get some color down. I really want to cover all the white space with color. I might even, before I go back to this painting, I might cover the outside of the face with a primer layer just to make it less frustrating because white, white shadows and fabric is so extremely dependent on really smooth, subtle transitions of color. 
And that's just, that's not going to happen with this on prime surface. I hope that feedback was appropriately uh, constructive and useful to some extent. Thank you for sharing your progress. I actually, I, I really want to get to the point where um, I can create little challenges for anyone who is creating alongside me. Um, there are a couple other streams that do that, streamers who do that. Uh, Miss Cookies has, sometimes she'll do still life studies and she'll post a picture of the still life to Twitter uh, right as she's starting her stream. And then anyone who's watching can draw or paint along with her and then tweet their progress at her and sometimes she shows it on stream, which I think is really fun. And she does give them like a little on the fly critique. And then there is a Creative Grenade who stream, they stream on the Adobe channel a lot. They're a team of digital designers and, and creators. Um, and they just launched CG Ventures, Creative G Grenade Ventures, which is a set of challenges specifically for designers. Um, and they, I don't know how long the challenges are running, but uh, yeah, you can tweet your progress at them, and then they will select stuff to share on stream if it's good or appropriate to their discussion. <laughs> it was awesome! That's how I'll brand my critiques. Awesome art critiques! Running out of white. That is actually how you really know this paint painting is absorbing color and pigment and paint at a rapid pace because if I'm out of white, that means I've been using a ton of white, a shit ton of white, a metric shit ton, metric fuck ton of white. Um, because white is the most opaque oil paint there is, so if you're trying to get a lot of coverage on, an, on a painting, even if you have a dark color, you mix in a little bit of white because it will just lend opacity to that paint. Um, Bob Ross talks about talked about transparent colors. There are some oil paints that are just naturally more transparent. There's Their pigment is strong and specific, but it's not super opaque, it just sits in the oil differently for some reason. I'm not sure if it's the distribution or the size of the color particles or what it is, but um, there are transparent colors. Titanium white, which I use, is one of the most opaque colors you can get. And so if you mix it into other colors, even dark colors, and then bring the dark back down, it increases the opacity. It just has something more for the pigments to cling to. Um, which means I've been using a lot of white in all of the colors that are not white. Thalo, yeah, phthalo blue and alizarin crimson are both transparent. Uh, I think I have some on here, actually. Yeah, I have phthalo blue on my palette and I have alizarin crimson. I'm going to see if I can show you guys the transparency that I'm talking about. Um, so right here, there's alizarin crimson. I'll grab a little bit of that. And uh, I'll show you white for comparison, but this is one of those transparent colors. So when you put it across the surface, you can see a little bit of the background through. I'll, I'll bring it closer so you can see. But you can see kind of, you can kind of see the background through there. Uh, I guess it would have been better if I had painted over something with detail. That's what I will do. Hold on. I have a Sharpie nearby. Art lesson! We need Toxic Terrorist back, too, to teleprompt me for discussion. I'm gonna get a lizard and crimson all over my face. Okay, so, I'm going to make this mark on my palette paper with Sharpie. There's this big black line. I'll make it bigger. Okay, so we have a decently sized, 
permanent mark on the surface of the canvas. I'm going to make sure that's dry. It's pretty dry. Okay, so uh, back to the alizarin crimson. I'll grab a little bit more. And you can see when we go over this that the black shows through. Well, that's not good either. Well, yeah, it's kind of good. It's kind of good. You can see that the, the black shows through. The red gets really dark over the black. Like, even if I paint this entire little section red, you can't really see the red over the black because it is transparent. Phthalo blue, which I also have on the palette, is the same way. So I'll do that over this way. There's phthalo. And you can see that that little patch right there is over the black and it still looks black. But white, titanium white specifically, is one of the most opaque colors you can get. I have my other colors mixed in there, so it's kind of a bad demonstration, but um, you can see that it covers up that black pretty much entirely. There is no more black. And the thing that Bob Ross does all the time, I'll grab a little bit of oil and a little bit of white, more oil. Uh, the thing that Bob Ross does is he uses these transparent colors over black like this, and then when you add color, it brings out all the color. Well, you can't really see it because it's light, but... Yeah, whenever he makes strokes, it changes the color over the black. So that was, that was my demonstration. Actually, it would be fun to do just a little demonstration at the header end of a stream that way. Pick a little black and then show actual lay down of transparent colors versus opaque colors. Uh, the kind of color or the kind of palette that I'm using, Riot, Riotini, Riotrini, I can't, your name is so small. Riot Inri, Riotrin, Riotinri, Riot Iniri, I don't know, <laughs> I'll call you Riot. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, I got caught up on trying to pronounce your name. I appreciate that though. Uh, Mocap, the kind of palette I'm using is gray palette paper, neutral gray palette paper. Um, you can see this palette locker is white, the paper is gray. It's a middle gray, so it's supposed to be able to help you understand the actual, the real contrast of your paint, what the lightest tones are and what the darkest tones are. Um, it gets a little tricky if you're painting on white surfaces, because you would rather paint on white so you know what it's going to look like on your palette. But I like it for the contrast element. And then I just have this box, which is known as a paint locker. It has a big lid that you put over the top of it, and it um, reduces the contact of the paint with air so that your paint lasts longer, the, the oil paint doesn't cure as quickly. Right, uh, this is actually technically our un underpainting because the surface isn't primed. It was supposed to be the first layer of our painting, but it has become the underpainting. on getting more of the skin tone but I'm gonna lay some of the uh, shade of the